Okay, let's get this show on the road. Hello to everyone. Just as we're doing the usual introductions here at vidIQ for a live stream, if you can all say a quick hello and give me a sound check, make sure that I'm coming through loud and clear, and that would be very much appreciated. To all of you watching this live stream or indeed on the replay, hello to another channel review from vidIQ where I look at channels and give you advice on how to improve whatever aspects of your channel may need looking at and indeed praise you for the things that you are doing very successfully on your channel. We do these live streams usually every Tuesday at 11 a.m. PST time, uh, so whatever that time is locally for you. And if you are watching this on the replay, don't go away, I highly recommend you do continue to watch this video, but maybe jump forward to about 10 minutes into the video as I do a little bit of uh, housekeeping and things before we jump into channel reviews. So, if everybody on the channel, I would really appreciate it whenever you feel that you're really enjoying this uh, content and you've got something valuable from it, please do, um, what shall I say this time, lightly click that like button because whenever you hammer it, it gets broken and I have to buy a new one. Uh, and, and also, please do people remind me to take a drink. I do have my drink here, which is not um, being removed by the green screen today. And if you were at the last live stream, you will remember I had a major water malfunction, but somehow the mouse survived. So uh, put it in a bowl of rice. If you do encounter any aquatic issues with live streams, and that should hopefully fix it. But I'm trying to put my drink as far away from the mouse as possible. So, the live stream channel reviews. Let me give you a brief rundown of uh, what's going to happen in this live stream. I'll be choosing a channel to review from my wonderful, fantastic moderators. What they'll be doing throughout this live stream is checking the chat because as I'm reviewing these channels, I really don't have time to, yes, I've got my finger pointing right this time. I really don't have time to look at the live stream chat as I'm going through. So really folks, this is a community video where you should be helping each other as I'm going through the channel. So post all of your constructive feedback for other channels. And if you aren't chosen for a review today, maybe put your channel up in the background and compare it to what I'm reviewing and what all the other people are commenting on. And maybe you can use some of those strategies even if you aren't selected today. So yeah, shout out to the moderators as usual. You all do fantastic work moderating and making sure that uh, we really have a constructive, productive live stream. And this live stream is still a little work in progress. I feel as if I'm almost nailing down all of the technical aspects of it for the live streams. But yeah, things do go wrong occasionally, uh, like last week when we had a five minute pause as I try to wipe up all the water from my desk. But um, yeah, we, we're pretty much getting there with how the live streams run. Okay, ground rules. There are several ground rules just to keep this live stream flowing as it should do. Picking channels, so reviewing your channel, is based purely on the contribution you have to both this live stream and previous live streams. For example, I've already selected the first channel to review for this live stream because of all the contribution they've made in previous comments on vidIQ videos and during the live streams, and this person certainly deserves the channel review that they're going to get. But if you want your channel reviewed in this live stream, then watch what I'm doing doing on my channel reviews, add your constructive criticism, and the moderators more or less have a power here because I cannot read the chat as we're going through it. So uh, you want to be looking out for extra sessions, media, and um, whoever else is moderating today as to how they're looking at the chat, and hopefully you can maybe influence them in a, a positive way. Super chats, so that's where you actually physically donate some money to this live stream. That doesn't guarantee you a chat review. The reason is I don't want to limit this to people who have the funds to um, help grow their channel. And to be honest, I can't see these live streams as they're going through on the chat. It goes far too fast and I won't be paying attention to that screen. So by all means, super chats are welcome but they shouldn't be used as a way of purchasing a channel review. I don't want live streams to be like that. Channel reviews really do depend on the content that you have. If it includes inappropriate content, 
whether or not that's acceptable to YouTube, such as foul and abusive language or sensitive subjects. If I see anything on that channel that I don't feel is appropriate for all ages, then I'm sorry. I just have to stop the channel review there and move on to something else. It's not fair uh, to do that. So please don't suggest channels if they include inappropriate content. I always say this and I always turn out to be wrong. I want to spend about five to 10 minutes on each channel review and I'm trying to improve that with each live stream that I do. It tends, ends up being about 15 to 20 minutes per channel. But yeah, I want to be more concise and valuable with the information I want to deliver to you and hopefully uh, that will get better as the live streams go along. Okay, what am I looking for in each of the channel reviews that I do? On screen now, you should see the bullet points that I have and these are the sort of things that you should be looking for when you're reviewing your own channel. If you want to perhaps give constructive, positive feedback to your own content. The most important thing on any channel is being able to identify a target audience and a message of value early straight away. That's quite an intangible concept and maybe that's why some people find it so difficult to uh, build a channel. But to try and paraphrase it, who should be watching and why. I should be able to identify that in the first two or three minutes of me looking at a channel. And if I can't, then I'll try and point that out. I'll also be looking at channel health, like how many videos are you posting on a regular basis? Do you have branding and consistency in your channel? For example, if I saw two different videos on the homepage that were from you, would I be able to tell that they're from you if I can't see the channel name? That all comes through channel branding. Then I'll look at channel layout. Do you have an intro, a channel trailer? Do you have playlists? What are the general look of your thumbnails and the type of content that you're doing? Are you consistent with that? And then if I have time, I'll go into maybe a specific video, perhaps your most successful video, and look at the titles, tags, and descriptions. That's video SEO. Are you not only making fantastic content, but are you really pitching that content correctly? Because a lot of video creators spend a lot of time creating fantastic content, but they don't realize that a thumbnail and a title can be just as important to get that potential viewer into your video. And I'll have a look at audience and engagement. Are you interacting with your audience when they post comments? Do you reply to them? Do you acknowledge them with a heart or a like? And of course, to cover any other aspect of a channel, we look at other points of interest because there's always something that comes up in all the channels that I look at. So those are the general bits of information that I will be looking at per channel. And just before we jump into the first channel review, I just wanted to uh, quickly look at some previous successes from channels um, who I've done channel reviews for. Now, I don't want to take the credit for this. What I want to say is that these people who are review who have had channel reviews are clearly putting a lot of effort and time into how to improve their own channels. Whether or not they take, they take my advice, they are doing something to improve their channels over and over again. They're not just repeating the same mistakes and hoping or doing the same thing and hoping that things will change. So the Doberman is one particular example who I did a channel review on two weeks ago and then in the last week, He's worked on, obviously, some videos which have made a, a big impact on his channel, and he has got an increase in watch time of about 400% there over the last week. So, big thumbs up to you. And also, another person I wanted to briefly mention was Amanda's Allotment, who I did a channel review on, and I, I seem to predict that it would take her a little while to get to a 1,000 subscribers, but she smashed it out of the park and has made the monetization deadline requirements today with a thousand subs and four thousand hours of watch time to qualify for that monetization which is brilliant news and as i say i'm not taking the credit for these these are just success stories from channels who were previously got channel reviews uh, on the vidiq live stream okay we are now 10 minutes into this live stream perfect timing for anybody who's doing a replay of this live stream let's have a look at our first channel of today and just a note to moderators start to keep an eye on the chat that's coming through uh, to line me up for the next channel review but the first one today is jjr survival who is bushcraft survival traps prepping kit making repurposing makes videos three times a week this uh, gentleman has 14,000 subscribers and look at this 10 million video views so awesome stuff there 
and has been on YouTube for nearly 10 years. So you're coming up to your uh, decade celebration there. We've always wondered about what prizes you should get. Like, it's, you don't quite get a Rolex watch, but maybe you should get a a mouse with three click buttons on it or something like that. Or, I don't know, a, a play button that allows you to play at three times speed. I'm, I'm waffling already. Let's have a look at some of the channel stats here. Hopefully... This tool will work today. This is one of the vidIQ tools, and I should mention that any tools that you see using I use during a live stream, and you think, what are they? They will likely come from the vidIQ Chrome extension. So there's a link in the description. Make sure you download it if you haven't already done so. So we're running at about 50,000 views a month, uh, 100 subscribers a month. That seems relatively low for the size of your channel, but you are consistently producing content, 10 videos, so that's one every three days. We'll ignore the estimated revenue because that's never accurate. Uh, we'll go to a six month run now. So view wise, you were doing better before Christmas and then had a bit of a lull, starting to pick up again. Um, and the subscriber count was better in the past. So it looks as if you are on a bit of a downturn here, at JGR Survival. So we'll maybe have a look at why that might be. B, and we'll start with your uh, channel homepage first. So first thing, or first thing is, I do like the channel banner in that it gives you some good information about the channel. Uh, basically, this ta this tagline down at the bottom here: bushcraft, survival, traps, prepping, kit making, repurposing. So we know what the vid the channel is about. However, we may need some sort of extra tagline there. We can understand it's about maybe surviving out in a wild, but could you maybe say to what end? Is it through your own experiences, through your adventures? Like maybe it's survival for beginners or survival for experts. So maybe we're losing a little bit here on the target audience that we're not quite sure who it's for. But you do have a lot of information here, which is good. Uh, you say that you publish three videos every week. Do you publish those on a particular day? Maybe you could, maybe you have a solid schedule there that you can tune into the viewers so they know exactly when to check out your content. If you don't do that, then that's no problem, but at least we know that you produce content on a consistent basis. And you have a um, profile picture here. I must confess, just looking at it, I can't immediately tell what it is. Is it a tent or something else? I'm not too sure. And also on the profile picture, it crops it a little bit as well. So you might want to look at your branding there just a tiny bit to see if you can maybe tweak that profile picture if possible. On your channel page, no channel trailer. Any particular reason for that might be useful to include a channel trailer. Your top playlist is uploads. And I'm modifying my advice here on the playlist. I still think you should have a playlist that sells your best videos first. Like, welcome to JJR Survival. This is what this is what we do here, and some of your most popular videos and the ones that clearly reflect your channel. But then also include uploads or recent uploads as maybe your second playlist, because what that represents to the user is that this is a active channel. So that they know that you've posted a video in the last. Uh, day in the last three days, the last six days, so it's a, an active channel. One more thing I want to add as well before I forget, and let's hope the technology works here. You need to be potentially a little careful about how your channel banner appears on a mobile device. I'm not sure on the specific dynamics, but you may end up, let's make that a bit thicker, you may end up with your channel banner being cropped on a mobile device. And I think the viewing space on a mobile device is around about there. So you may lose your three videos a week and some of your profile picture. And maybe consider not even having a profile picture on the channel banner because you have a profile picture down there. It's maybe not required. So something to consider for all video creators is that channel banner size. However it looks on a desktop will probably look different on a mobile device. And there's a significant number of people who watch YouTube videos on mobile devices now. So just bear that in mind as you have your channel banner. Uh, we do have other playlists here, and I'm delighted to see that these playlists have descriptions in them, so that's adding to the uh, metadata on your uh, search engine optimization. Um, uh, look, looking at the titles of the 
playlist again. These seem a bit functional. Bushcraft, bushcraft equipment. You maybe want to flesh that title out a little more because remember that is in search. That does come up as search in YouTube. So maybe bushcraft equipment for what or like on a budget or is there anything else that you can add to that title? If we read the description, bushcraft and survival also do a bit of prepping. I also do videos on traps and snares. So it sounds like... Ah, now, here we go. I've just noticed something. So you're copying your playlist description in each of the playlists. You don't want to do that. You want to try and write a unique playlist description for every playlist that you have. So it's good that you have description there, but it needs to be a little more descriptive about the current playlist that you're talking about. However, you have playlists, and that's good. And if you have a time, playlists... I always talk a lot about playlists in these channel reviews, but is that the most important thing on your channel? Probably not. It's maybe the thing that you want to think about after you've do fix your thumbnails, after you think your fix your channel, your video titles. So yeah, something to think about. I'll just have a look at how many playlists you have. Hey, look, there we are. Uh, that's delightful. I'm going to be a big plus there. I'm, this channel automatically gets 10 out of 10 for having a like playlist, which includes one of our videos there. Uh, but you have a good number of playlists. Um, I'm starting to see though that we might have an issue with thumbnails. So let's jump into your video section and see what we have with thumbnails. So folks, I want to give you, some, I want you to start giving us some really good feedback about what you think of these thumbnails uh, as I give you some f feedback. Uh, one thing that I will say is, is this a live stream that you've tested out JJR? A big thumbs up again if you're testing out live streaming for the first time. I hope it's working out for you and going well. Just keep trying it test it, see how it goes, everything will improve and you get so much more of a better interaction with your audience. Now, some things I will say about the thumbnails. The JGR survival on the left hand side here. I think, yes, good that you do have some channel branding. However, I think it's maybe taking up a bit too much of your real estate for your thumbnails. And the text here is a little squashed as well, which makes it a little messy so I might want to turn that into a little squarey bit of branding maybe in one of the corners I have seen other channels use it successfully though um, but maybe you need to use a different font or something another problem we have is that with the thumbnails they tend to be a bit muddy because you're either just taking a frame from your video or you're taking a very quick picture of your product and it can or whatever it is you're covering, and it can kind of disappear with the rest of the screen. Like here's, here's a good example, 15 pound bushcraft shelter. Because you have, it looks as if you're maybe put it on some bed sheeting or a, behind a curtain, and these lines are quite distracting for the product. So you maybe want to try and get a better image of just the product and a maybe increase the vibrancy of the picture and blur the background. So these are all like more advanced thumbnail techniques that you want to think about. I, I think there's this potential here, like bushcraft on a budget. And we have some text here, which is telling you what's going on. But the product itself disappears a little bit. And you have to be careful about the text running it over your product or whatever it is you're covering again. Another example here, the conifer bear trap. I can barely see what what that is there there's something attached to a tree uh but from my point of view it looks like some sort of romulan warbird from star trek that's just me being a bit of a layman here not knowing anything about bushcrafting uh, but it's kind of disappearing into the background uh, here's a better example where you've made some sort of homemade contraption out of some shopping baskets for a clam trap uh but again there is the background there, which is sometimes overtaking uh, the product. And another thing here, homemade clam trap. Do you really need to have that in the title and wording in the, the uh, title as well? If, if it was me personally here, I might just want to remove that text completely and make the clam trap the... I'm really having to be careful with my words here. Clam trap the star of a thumbnail, so to speak. But let's have a look at some good things. You do have the branding. 
you do have lettering which is very clear that's bright and we can see a little bit of a stroke effect so that it's always clear to see the text but sometimes the text becomes a little too dominant another one here 2018 update xmas gifts i can't really see any of the gifts there um if you need to maybe go to amazon or whatever to get an, an example of a product something brighter and clearer then maybe that's something that you need to do um but yeah so Certainly work there to be done on the thumbnails. Like you have the fundamentals. You have the object, the main focus of the video is in there, whatever object that is. You have some branding in there. So you have the fundamentals. We just need to maybe move to the next step with some of those uh, thumbnails. Let's have a look at your most popular ones because you do have 10 million views. Uh, and this is, a, a sim I think, similar to last week where we had some very popular videos which are all very, which are all older. I actually prefer the that um, font actually on your uh, thumbnails. If you could maybe turn that to yellow. Uh, so, but these videos were a, a, t a different time when YouTube was a completely different beast, and you were probably able to capitalize on much less video, far fewer video creators um, making uh, videos. If we could maybe find what's your most successful recent video. I mean, look at all of these; are all very old videos. So. There is a question here for you, JJR Survival, from all these videos that were very successful previously. Did you take a break from making videos? I know you've made about a thousand videos, but all your most popular ones were about 10 years ago. And there's nothing recently that's really making an impact. Uh, did you take a very long break, which meant that YouTube kind of forgot about your channel? Oh, here's, here's the most recent one here. How to make a rat trap. Uh, that's got 42,000 views. So let's jump into this one and see what's going on with it. So. Desktop audio down a bit there. Seemed like a, a relatively good intro that you uh, had a, a quick shot of uh, a tent and then a splash screen for the intro, I think. And now you're doing what looks to be a quick time lapse of constructing a rat trap. So you're condensing down that content, giving the viewer more of what they want in less time, which is certainly a good thing. Um, having a look at the video tags, how to make a rat trap is a, a good video tag to have. It's a longer tail keyword. Uh, a lot, m most of these, I don't know, this plastic bottle mouse trap how to blind trap. We don't have many comments and we don't have many likes to, like the engagement rate is relatively low compared to the view count. So maybe this was shared on an external video, but there's some generally good things here. I like that you've got your, um, like a bra your watermark has the subscribe uh, logo in it and button. So there's some good fundamentals there. Let's see on your description. You need to be probably a little careful here on your description. Is It looks to be some attempted tag stuffing there. It is where dangerously going towards YouTube's terms of service. And you may want to include your trapping book and product information a little further down in your description as you may be missing an opportunity there to just add a bit more to the metadata to help you uh, get higher on the search terms. Um, but, and are you replying to comments? Let's have a look. It looks as if you are. Yeah, it seems to be where, wherever engagement you have on your channel, you're certainly replying. So again, more good YouTube fundamentals. Let's, um, now, just before we finish this channel review, I just wanna go back to your videos and see if we can maybe help you. Because you have this problem where you have all of these really popular videos from a long time ago, and you could continue to make them and be dominant in your field, but the chances are you just have hundreds, maybe thousands of more survival YouTube video creators who have invaded your space and overtaking you. So let's just go back to the newest. So maybe it's just a case of you 
need to watch these other competitors? And is there any sort of tips you can get from them in terms of production value or the topics that they're covering? Obviously, I have a very little knowledge of uh, bushcraft survival. When the apocalypse happens, I will be one of the first to perish. So I can't really give you any specific advice in this area. But yeah, I mean, generally speaking, your view counts are solid for... You're producing content of a similar nature, so it looks as if you have a core audience of between about 300 and 1,000 viewers. So you're not making any dud comment that content that channels are just switching off, or that viewers are switching off from. But yeah, I think that's... There we are. Uh, I can't think of any more general piece of advice other than maybe look at your competitors and see how they're taking their videos. Uh, maybe you can bring some of their elements into your content, JGR Survival, and I wish you the very best look. And generally, congratulations on the 15,000 subscribers you have and the 10 million views you've already had. I mean, you're probably in the top 10% of YouTubers, 10, 20% of YouTubers who have that many views, um, which is fantastic stuff. All right, I think it's time we moved on to the next channel review because, as always, that channel review was 15 minutes long uh, when I said I was going to be about five minutes long. Who have we got next, moderators? Give me a channel, and I will take a look. In the meantime, I'll have a quick drink. There's some wonderful comments coming through here, here as well. Uh, a lot of people giving some very positive comments here. Right, I think I've got that one. I'm probably going to spell this wrong. I do apologise. Oh, God. Got it wrong. Just type it in again there so I can quickly see it. This is this horrible section where I need to try and get the channel name whilst trying to spell it. And I need to come up with a better way of doing this. It was Christopher Duxbury. I saw that name come up at uh, Extra Sessions Meter, I think. So I've got the second bit right. Why is that not coming on then? That's because I've... Put the eye in the wrong place. Are we going to get anywhere this time? I'm having a nightmare. Okay, let's just switch back to me. And Christopher, if you're on a live stream, can you just respond, post a comment, and then that means I can get your channel directly from the live stream. I think I've found it. We might be in business. Bing, there we go, right. So we are with, I think the pronunciation is uh, Christopher Duxbury. And we have 331 subscribers on a channel with 35,000 views. Started or joined YouTube in 2015. Always sassy with a hint of classy. I'm here to use comedy to poke holes in the status quo. That's a nice bit of alliteration and rhyming there. I love the sound of laughter and I hope that my channel can help create some of, some of that sound. So uh, a bit of a... Precursor, I Christopher has been contributing some fantastic stuff on VidIQ, and I'm I am aware of some of his content, and it, the, it's brilliant, really positive energy in all of his videos. And this is one of the people who I think should be um, hopefully going on to bigger and greater things here in 2018 for YouTube. But there's always that beginning where you have to grind and hustle, and hopefully hit that. Um, big video that really pays off. We don't have a channel stats for this one, unfortunately. So let's go straight to your home. And we're Welcome delighted. Back. Welcome back. I'm going to just wind that back and we'll look at the channel trailer. And uh, yeah, I think this will tell us everything we need to know about the channel. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Christopher, but you can call me, well, Christopher. 
channel is all about changing the online conversation with a little bit of laughter and a buttload of sass to try to make the world a happier place. I don't beat around the bush here. I cover a ton of different topics from gender issues to LGBT culture and ethnic debates to the other side of the spectrum where I talk about weirder things like what a guy does in the shower or urinal etiquette. Things okay, maybe we should stop it there. I don't think it goes on to anything uh, cheeky, but you get an idea of a channel here. The, the presenter here with all this confidence and indeed sass I wish I was able to present like that in front of camera as confidently as you do, Christopher. But we we have an understanding within 30 seconds of watching this channel trailer, pretty much everything about this channel, who it's geared towards and the type of delivery and style, which is towards these uh, areas of issues, creating a conversation uh, between the issues that are important to Christopher, but in a way that's entertaining and uh, f just funny, basically. And... Just this beginning bit here of like the first 10 seconds. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, welcome. As a video editor, I know that something like that probably takes about half an hour to an hour to edit in itself. And so you can see that the production values are top notch and there's a lot of effort being put into each of these videos. Here we are with the channel banner, trying to be classy, mostly just sassy. It's a good pitch and it intrigues you as a viewer. And that, and the tra channel trailer complementing this channel banner is perfect. A, one small note is uh, Christopher, as we just noted with the um, other uh, channel banner from JGR Survival, in mobiles, you might get cut off there, but it kind of gives you that David Blaine look. So I uh, don't think there's anything particularly wrong with that. It probably look, might actually look a little better on mobile. Uh, so maybe you've uh, driven it drilled it towards that type of look so we have a channel trailer uh new to the channel check out these first i hang on hang on somebody is paying attention to what i say which is brilliant thank you very much for that G gives me a warm place in my heart that we can see here that new to the channel these are some of the things that uh that are important to me on my channel and really sell my channel so clearly a, a very personal video here uh, that gives you a lot of information about Christopher and uh, where he is. Uh, how can you save the internet? So we're also looking at YouTube issues there. And also a bit of laughter here, probably with a speak out game, which I've played once and uh, drooled all over the carpet. This channel is entirely about making fun of a status quo. So there you are, the channel pitch again in a single line. And then we have more playlists. Click here to laugh. Um, you might want to bring back your recent uploads playlist, Christopher, just to just to show that your channel is very active. And I'm kind of going a little bit back on my previous suggestions, but as we learn more, we all have uh, new opinions. Playlists are bountiful and plenty. Uh, let's have a look now at your videos. We'll try to have a look at the branding channel consistency. Oh, so you've just done your channel trailer. So uh, it was a fantastic time to come and visit your channel. Here we are then. You are, appear in every single thumbnail, which is good for branding. We kind of get an idea that it's, that it's from you all the time. It looks as if you are playing about a little bit with your thumbnails. Like th there was a theme here with perhaps... A couple of vlogs but maybe you've decided to depart from that and now we've gone to this quality style thumbnail of you in the foreground with whatever pose you you do in a particular video and the the background so there's a real fantastic contrast here between a foreground and background another good thumbnail there um you haven't got any channel branding, but again, do you need any channel branding? Because if you just put your avatar in a thumbnail, that would just look weird with you having two versions of yourself. Do you have a non-profile picture channel banner that's, that you can maybe put in there? Because your channel name is Christopher Duxbury, so you don't necessarily have a channel name as such that we can see. But... Thumbnails here are pretty fantastic. There's a lot of effort going into these thumbnails. I mean, Christopher, you just want to post in the chat what you're using, what video, um, presumably it's Photoshop, but just in case it's something different, let the other viewers know. And also, 
um, how long it takes for you to make each of these uh, vid these thumbnails. Well, I'll look at your most popular ones now. Truth about first dates, are you getting old? So two topics here which got you the most views by a significant amount. Did you try and double down on this concept of, of a truth about dates? Could you do a, a follow-up like uh, myths about first dates or your experience of first dates or first date disasters, the like top five worst dates you've had or the, the top five first dates your friends have told you about? I'm just throwing out ideas here of how you could capitalize on your most successful video uh, potentially in the future. We'll play it for the now for the first 15, 20 seconds and try and get an understanding of what your videos are about. I'm going to guess it's going to be high octane, lots of editing, and it'll just smack you in the face with the content and your sassiness. Welcome back. First, let me start by saying hi. Welcome to 2018. I've just got to wait for the video to catch up here as usual. Welcome back. First, let me start by saying hi. Welcome to 2018. Happy New Year. I hope your holidays were absolutely incredible. I hope you enjoyed the videos at the end of 2017. It was so incredible coming out with daily content and oh my god, what a challenge, but I hope you enjoyed it. Secondly, I would love to know what you guys think of the new background. It's not quite done yet, but it's almost there. But enough of that. I want to talk to you guys about something that I have noticed a lot. And so an interesting approach here in that you had almost like a community feel to your video to begin with in the introduction. You were talking almost directly to your subscribers, which was good. And you were even asking for feedback on your background, which, by the way, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, again, a good example here of your stand, your lighting is good, that you're standing probably in front of a ring light, which uh, really focuses and exposes you. Uh, but the background is dark with with the with your new lighting setup, which I'm sure I've said before, which I absolutely love. So yeah, that was an interesting way of talking to your audience, maybe your subscribers first, but then now launching into this more, I guess, hero content that you're trying to reach out to a broad audience. If we look at the um, tags now. First dates, truth about dating, that's going to be a very big topic, I would have thought. So it's going to be difficult to break into the tags here. But, but the truth about first dates, so this is a good example where you have a longer tail keyword of five words, and that's just creeping into the top of the search results, perhaps. So you may want to look more at some further. Um, sorry, my screen just went black for a second then. Hope it didn't do it on the live stream. Uh, you may want to look at some more long tail keywords if you can, like first date full episode. First dates full episodes is another good long tag. Uh, there are quite a few short tail tags in here, so like first truth, love, man, girl, guy. Those are all very broad tags, and I'm not sure if you, with a channel of your size, whether you want to be really even worth concentrating on those tags. Uh, maybe maybe skip some of them and look at the ones such as the truth about first dates, first dates, uh, dating relationships, blind dates, dating advice, maybe focusing a little bit on them. But at the same time, you're really putting some research and using the whole amount of the whole tag character length that you have at your disposal. The truth about first dates, a very clear, direct um, title. And this is a small technique that some people use in that they will emphasize uh, a particular word in their title. So if you think that capitalizing all of your titles is a bit too far, then this is a step down when you can capitalize one or two words just to emphasize something. And it's clearly worked on this video. You've got 5,000 views. Another strange one where we don't have much engagement and not many comments. So again, has this been uh, embedded in a, in, a, in a different source that we can maybe check? Or maybe you want to check and see why was it shared in this particular area? It might be worth uh, looking at if you can possibly do that. Another good thing here is that you've got um, a high level of creator suggested. That means you're probably, your content in each of your videos is very similar or your audience retention is high, which means that it's telling YouTube that viewers like your content. Therefore, I should show you more of the same content. And there we are. You can see all of Christopher's uh, further videos there. 
and you're hearting comments, which is good. And it looks as if you're replying to comments. So this is one of these difficult ones to say that you're doing many of the YouTube fundamentals very well. And you just need to continue to reach out to a wider audience if you can. So I think Tim Schmoy talks a little about this. There needs to be a degree of hero content, such as these ones where you're trying to reach out to a broader audience to try and get new viewers to come into your content. But then you also have community videos as well. So not much uh, advice I can tell you, Christopher, other than you're doing fantastic work. And similar to when I did a, a channel review on Steph ABT before, before Christmas on an automotive channel, you just really need that break, breakthrough video, I think. You need somebody to really enjoy this video who has the ability to share it to a larger audience and then you should see your your channel grow. It's You're in that embryonic stage where you're hustling, you're doing all the right things, you just need a breakthrough and hopefully that's going to come soon. And I just want to say, as before, fantastic for you. Fan, thank you very much for your continued contribution to vidIQ on the whole. It really is appreciated. And uh, yeah, big thumbs up to you. So yeah, there's some people asking Christopher some questions in a chat. If he's able to answer those, I would really much appreciate it. Let's move on to the next channel, please. I've only done two and we're 40 minutes in as usual. If uh, one of the moderators has a channel you think I should look at, let's go for it. I'm just uh, quickly reading through the chat here and there's some, yeah, everybody's giving Christopher some really positive uh, feedback and I agree. It's one of those um, channels where I'm thinking, you know, some of this stuff is way in advance of what I do in terms of the, the video editing and the, the camera quality and, and things. It's like, you should have as many subscribers as, as I have or vidIQ or any of the other uh, similar channels. Okay, uh, moderators, I'll give you 30 more seconds, uh, and if not, I will choose a... Uh, oh, here we go. Thank you, Henrik's House from Ex Extra Sessions Media. And after this one, uh, moderators, I will pick the next channel. I've already got one in mind. So I just need to find this channel if I can... If I possibly can... Looks as if I haven't got it quite right again. Henrik's house v. Henrik's house. Okay, so I need to take out the D and put in the S. Okay, I will jump to this channel and if Henrik's house, if you could just tell me. If this is the right channel before we jump into the channel review, I would very much appreciate it. Yes, it is. Thank you very much, Henrik's House. Let's take a look at your channel. 303 subscribers on a channel with 6,000 views. So a uh, small channel here with, do we have any channel stats? Let's check them out. Probably not considering the video channel size, but here we go. I'll just let the channel trailer play. If this is a, no, it's not a channel trailer. Okay, we. We won't let the channel trailer play because there isn't one. Uh, right, so family fun, Henrik's house, DIY, vlogs, craft, unboxing reviews. So you've got a lot of going on here. Let's have a look at your about page. This is going to be a journey that me and my family are taking on. Hopefully we can do some stuff that will entertain you and and you you and get you to come back. If you like everyday family stuff, goofy kids, parents, DIY. So this is an interesting one in that the channel's about family fun. Um, but there's some of the key topics are DIY, vlogs, crafts, unboxing, and reviews. You might be want to be careful about just how much you reveal specifically in your 
message because maybe that's a little too much. Do I want to see unboxings or do I want to look at DIY videos? Do I want to see a family vlogging channel or do I want to see reviews on what whatever the reviews are on? I think you might want to merge all of this into a some a sentence that is pretty much in your description. Like everyday family stuff, but maybe flesh that out a little bit more. We'll, we'll have a look a little bit more on that in the videos. We'll look at the titles and see what's going on because I think the emphasis clearly here is about a family adventure or vlogs. So in, you may just be diluting the strength of that message with these slightly random tags that you're introducing there. But I might be wrong. It's just the first impression Okay, so on to the channel layout. You've put your playlists as one of your first lists. And again, if we go back to Christopher Duxbury, um, try and include something that tells me a little bit more about your channel. So here I'm seeing all of these things about DIY crafts, unboxings. Maybe you want to include your best videos from each of those topics, just so that we can get an idea of the different aspects, but not necessarily mention the it in a scattergun approach up here. Uh, so yeah, maybe move this playlist list further down. Keep your popular uploads sort of where they are, and maybe bring your recent posts up. Is that are those community posts or is that recent videos? Okay, so these are your recent video uploads. So you want to try and bring that up a little higher if you can. And try and introduce this playlist which tells tells us more about your channel in general. And I'm not seeing any channel description, uh, playlist descriptions here as well. So from the playlists that you do have, try and add some playlist descriptions. And again, really work more on the playlist. February and January, that means pretty much nothing to the YouTube indexing when you're searching for it. So if you want to make it a bit more attractive to the search and indexing for YouTube, it might be Hem the Henrik's family life in January or what we got up to in January or something that's just a bit more Not descriptive, because these are there's a difference between functional playlist titles and, well, let's put this in a way. Would you use this as a video title? Clearly you wouldn't. It would be a lot more descriptive and it would be attempting to bring the viewer into the playlist. So think more along those lines when you are creating your playlist. As for videos, I'm seeing some good branding here and... I like the way that you're using your text here in that, let's have a look at the text here, too much love, but that's not included in the title. So where there's always, a, I think it was with JJR Survival, his text was both mentioned in the thumbnail and in the title, which was kind of a duplication of your sales pitch. Whereas here, there's always something a little bit different to the um well and then i say that and look at i dot to visit new glasses maybe if you could change that to something more like a uh, am i a robot or robot eyes or something because this this picture is quite entertaining in itself and you probably want to bring the picture a little more to the right so we can get a full look at that exciting interesting uh, entertaining picture um but generally speaking your your text actually becomes part of your channel branding. If you were looking at your video in the suggested videos and they were appeared sporadically, we could pretty much tell that all of these come from the same video creator because of the way you've used the text, which I quite like. And yeah, I can see that you're, you're evolving your text here as well. Like there's too much text on that channel, on that thumbnail. And as we go through your most recent videos, there's less text, but it's bigger and brighter. 
again, you may want to just think about where the text is because sometimes it can be a little too dominant, like here, too much love. What is this in the background? I can't really even tell. It looks like grass and you've colored your grass maybe, but I'm not too sure. This text should probably be a third of the size, maybe in the top corner. And there should be a lot more detail put on the on the picture here. And yeah, just as we we're saying here, probably you want to move the picture of the person over to the right a little bit. Make sure that the text is a little bit smaller. Just so that you're selling the thumbnail a little bit more. Uh, text is probably secondary. And the, the picture or the frame should be the most important thing. And it looks as if uh, as a YouTube, as a channel, you're still developing that a little bit. You say you've be, you've made a lot of videos in the last couple of wow. Are you posting? Are you doing daily vlogs? It certainly looks like it. So there's a lot of effort, hard work, and effort going into the channel here, which is good to see. So look at your most popular videos. So your most popular video is a cruise. So something interesting there. You probably can't repeat this now because it was probably a cruise holiday. And you can't do more videos about cruising, but certainly your top three videos were people watching your cruise travel. So it's a bit difficult to say, yeah, you should go on another cruise and just vlog as much as possible. That's going to be quite expensive. But maybe the next time you notice that a video is doing well, if you can capitalize on it, you your DIY ones here, so there's two DIY ones which are successful. So maybe you can think about more uh, successful DIY videos that you can do. Uh, video length is also good on each of your videos. It tends to be between 7 and 30 minutes, sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less. So yeah, maybe you um, maybe you want to focus a little bit on some DIY stuff. I know you said I, I I know I said I wasn't sure about what your videos, what your channel's about, but maybe that it may develop into the thing that your channels really focus on, like you a family channel who focuses on DIY furniture or making things on a budget. That, ten, that seems to be your most successful video so far, but that could change. So I don't want to specifically say this is what you should do, but this is where your most successful videos are so far. I'm going to jump into one of these videos now. Just try and get more information on your delivery and video editing style. So what I can pick up from this video here is that you have a music introduction, which is fine. And that gives me a sense that there's going to be a story to the video that you're about to do. But I would be very interested to know what your audience retention is here, because there's about, what is it, at least 20 to about 40 seconds of a musical intro here. And is that delivering your title immediately? And the answer is not really. I'm, I was starting to lose a little bit of faith on where this video was going. So what you might want to do in the first 10 to 15 seconds is have, pick out a crucial element of the video later on. Maybe you have a bit of a disaster building this cage or you're close to the final completion or something that teases the rest of the video and then go into more of the vloggy musical introduction type aspect of it. Um, just my personal thoughts. I'm not a vlogging channel, so there may be different opinions on this, but we're missing, I think we're missing an introduction here that helps us establish the story of the video before the, the musical montage. I think Casey said that a, mon a musical montage and these sorts of 
parts of a video. Usually the transition from one part of the story to another, but the problem is the story hasn't started yet in this video. So just just my thoughts as I, as I was watching the beginning of this. And of course, that's a good subjective opinion. That you, I'm sure there'll be people posting comments now who have slightly different opinions, and please do read them as well. But that's my opinion as a viewer of the video. Tag wise, uh, I'm always, I always forget what these tags are. Is it the um, the thumbnail image tag that's in there by accident? So DIY guinea pig enclosure, how to care for your guinea pig. So some good long tail keywords here, guinea pig cage, paper bedding, cage bedding. So a lot of tags that are linked to, I guess, building a guinea pig page. And if I say that one more time, I'm really going to get my tongue twisted. Um, oh, so just also here, you, are, you have channel tags. Um, so these tags are what you can add to your channel as a whole. And maybe that's why your cruise videos are so successful because you put a ton of cruise ship tags in there. So you might want to think about changing them unless you want to become a family vlogging channel, channel cruise channel. Wow. Let's say that again. A family cruise channel vlog something or other. I can't even say it one twice. And you may want to include Henrik's house and maybe some phrases or some slogans in your slogans from your video tags. That may help you with the creator suggested uh, videos there. And do more with your video description. That just repeats the title, vlog number 73, family vlogs, daily uploads. Okay, so we do get a schedule there. Uh, you need to add more about your channel, I think. Really... Tell us a bit more about how you're building this guinea pig cage. Why did you do it? Or maybe you built it because it was on a budget or because your previous one broke. And also include more in your description about other videos that you have, like post links to your channel, a subscription link, playlist links. Uh, more effort needs to be done in the pitch there a little bit. And I think we will call it a day there for Henrik's house. Uh, you're, are you replying to comments? It looks as if, oh, are you? I don't think you are replying to comments either. So you have a bit of engagement here. You've given the comment a heart, so it sends a notification to those people. But I think certainly on a vlogging channel where it's about family and there's going to be a community building up, wanted to know more about, um, about you have you done one reply here? Yeah, so I would say even if it's a very quick reply, just try and reply to all of your comments. If there's only a few comments, treat them like gold and reply as much as possible. But I will say, Henrik's house, you're in a very crowded market and vlogging channel. And if this, this is as much about documenting your family and having these memories <laughs> captured and it's not so much about building an audience and improving your channel, then that is absolutely fine as well. Obviously, I sometimes look at this purely from a aspect of how to get more views or how to get more subscribers. And maybe that's not the most important thing for you uh, on your channel. But I hope you found uh, some of those tips useful. And with an hour gone, let's move on to our next channel review, which is going to be... Hopefully, if I can find this channel. It's not going to let me find it. Okay, Brick House. I know you are in there in the chat somewhere. Can you just reply, post a comment, and that will allow me to jump to your channel so I can give it a review because I've seen your channel before and there's some pretty spectacular things on it. Oh, don't disappear, don't disappear. The chat's going too fast. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see this. Oh, you can't see it on screen, but the chat is going so fast I can't get to um, 
I can't get to the, ch the channel. Somebody's um, donated a uh, super chat, by the way. I, I'm really grateful for that, but the live stream screen is broken for the uh, super chat, so I can't read it at the moment, but I will try and get back to you. Okay, a brick move, not brick house. Right, here we go. Yes, I do mean you, sir. Right, let's get back onto the live stream. And let's get the right screen up. There we go, brick move. Now, if you've not seen this channel before and you're interested in Lego, you need to go visit it because there is some wonderful, I think you call it stop motion animation here. The channel has 1,800 subscribers. But this will probably reveal a little bit more about the channel. And it has 300,000 views. Now, the channel creator, I assume, is German. Therefore, we have, um, obviously, the German language here. So it does make it a little bit difficult for some of us to maybe look at the titles. And the SEO might be a bit of a problem. But let's try and find one of these videos just to illustrate how astonishing some of this content is. I will play, let's just play one of the most popular videos. Hopefully it isn't too graphic. I don't think they are, but here's just an example of one of the videos. So even if you're not into war as such or Lego, you can see the astonishing production values and effort that's going into each of these videos. And that is a brilliant example of a channel which has clearly a passion for their topic, which is uh, creating animation, stop motion animation on Lego in war period settings. And... It's a simple tagline, bringing bricks to life, absolutely. And you have some of these Lego characters in war outfits, which uh, reinforces again the message of what the channel's about. So if what, what I want to jump to first is just show you how some of these videos have been successful. This is a classic example of where somebody's produced what's called hero content. They've spent a lot of time, energy, and resources on particular videos that have been super successful, like 140,000 views, 40,000 views, 30,000 views, 20,000 views from a channel that only has 2,000 subscribers. So obviously a brick move. I would love for you to be able to double down on each of these types of videos that you're, you're making. For example, the Battle of Mace is probably a bit of a niche battle from World War II, so maybe the Battle of Britain or the Battle of Stalingrad or the Battle of Berlin. I have a bit of World War II knowledge, so I can maybe um, talk about some of the topics which may be a bit more broader. I think the thumbnails are absolutely fantastic. We've got channel branding in the top corner there. We've got a simple bit of wording and then these thumbnails, which are really effective for uh, what they do. You've got some color coding here. It might be interesting to know why you've color coded them in a certain do certain way. Um, but the other thing I will also assume is that each of these videos must take weeks, if not months to produce. So there might be long gaps between when you produce these videos. And so how do you fill that? So I'm just going to have a look at the most recent ones. I know I'm doing this channel review a little differently, but I'm trying to focus on the, the big stuff uh, to begin with. I think... So here we here's a good example of some of the, the content that you're doing to try and fill those gaps, like you have uh, a workflow of how you do your stop motion animation. So those are the filler videos for when you're producing these uh, spectacular content ones, but you also have reviews on particular, um, it looks like tanks and also stuff from, basically what, what you're, the passion, you're clearly interested in war Lego as such, and that comes out in all of your videos. 
obviously we have the language barrier here in that some of your content is being produced to a try and bring in a English speaking viewers, but a lot of content is also from, for your, for presumably your German audience. So that can be a bit of an issue, but yeah, there's some awesome stuff here. Brilliant thumbnails. Um, and I guess that's maybe just the, the one small problem. Do you put any of your playlists into languages? You might want to include a playlist for your English language content which just helps any people like me who visit your channel and find really entertaining stuff but then I look at another video and it's in German which means it's very difficult to for me to continue watching your content but there's tutorials behind the scenes updates mocks you might want to play about a little bit with some of those thumbnails go back to the channel layout so Lego Stop Motion Brit Battle, although it doesn't say uh, welcome to Brit Moves, here's what we do here. I think this best illustrates your best work because it is Lego Stop Motion that I see this as your main area of interest. Um, but yeah, potentially you might want to create additional playlists uh, because these are obviously ones which are in English and so it may help you to attract the English audience as well as the audience uh, in Germany as well. So I'll just go back to your most popular video and have a look at your metadata, some of the SEO here. Oh, it's a different video, but still a popular one. And no surprise here in that you're crushing your tags of Lego Battle of Minsk. There's probably not that many search, probably not that higher search volume going on, but World War II Brick War, that might be one that has a little more search. And then you have the more popular tags lower down, but that's fine. You're, you're dominating your tags, which you know you can do with these longer tail keywords, but then you're also including medium-sized keywords, Lego World War II battles, Lego World War II, Lego World War II stop motion. All of these are really intelligent tags to use. And yeah, I all I would say is, I don't know where you're gonna find time to do this, but just double down on these super successful uh, videos because I'm sure that anybody who subscribed to, because they watched this video, will certainly watch the next Lego World War II battle of whatever that area is. I mean, that's kind of a, your, your where you can dominate. Lego World War II, a battle of, is certainly something that you could focus on if you have the time. And this is a good example. You've got brilliant comments here. And this is a sort of video that if it gets shared on Reddit, it could potentially go val viral. And much like Christopher Duxbury, I think you've already had some success. You just need to keep working and hopefully you'll get some, some more success. I guess the problem is that you're just not building a subscriber base, perhaps because of a language barrier, and that might might be the potential issue that you have there. I wonder if um, it might be worth you doing some live streams of just when you do reviews on some of your Lego content, or maybe a live stream of just doing a couple of bits of frames for your animation. That could be a way to also include content while you're producing these longer pieces of hero content. But yeah, I would recommend anybody who uh, hasn't seen this channel before, Brick Moves, just go take a look at the production values, the thumbnails, the branding. There's a lot of good stuff here. And we just need to up this subscriber subscriber base. We, you need. I, I wonder if it's because these videos are being shared outside of YouTube. Or, or are you including anywhere... I guess it, it kind of ruins the cinematic aspect, but if you could include a subscribe button, maybe you want to change your branding watermark there to a clear subscribe button, and maybe you could cheekily include, I don't know, maybe 20 seconds in, just a little subscribe animation somewhere just to promote people to get to subscribe to your content. But again, that's going to be a tough choice because I know you're going to lose a bit of 
the film epic sense if you do add what might be a, a bit of a cheap or tacky animation. So I really want to make sure that I covered Brick Moves here in the channel reviews and uh, yeah, brilliant stuff there. Okay, I hope you appreciate my feedback there, Brick Moves, and you are another one who I think your channel is destined for much greater things if you just nail a couple more of these um, Lego World War battles. Maybe, I suppose an idea could be, just as I'm thinking about it, if you want to try and hit a trending topic, is maybe you can do a stop motion on the Avengers film as it comes out. I know that's separating yourself away from what your current passion is, but to try and create a hero video to attract a much wider audience to come back into your channel, that might be want something that you want to um, think about in the future. Because it's a bit more niche, the idea of World War bat Lego battle, but you clearly have a supreme talent for Lego stop motion. Maybe you just want to try and pick out a couple of... I mean, did you do anything when Dunkirk came out? That might have been a brilliant opportunity to have a tie into Dunkirk. Maybe look at the next big war films that are coming out and tie your next stop motion into that sort of area. Just ideas again that are coming, uh, coming up in my head. Okay, I'm going to do one more channel review. So each, so um, moderate if you could, moderators, if you could suggest a channel for me to look at, and that will be the final channel review of the day. And then I'll try and remember to look at some of the super chats. Uh, by the way, uh, moderators, you've picked some good channels today. We've had a good mix of different channels, which has really helped. So we just have one more channel, please. And I will take a look and give you as much helpful conversation as possible. Look at all this free advertising that Brick Move is getting as we wait for a, a moderator to give us a channel. I'll give you another 20 seconds, moderators, and then I'm gonna choose my own. I'm going to just see if I can, if this person has a channel worth reviewing. Yeah, I think we're going to choose this one. And um, the reason I'm choosing this one... I think uh, Kitchen Confidence. I think I've already done Kitchen Confidence, haven't I? Okay, um, in that case, I will do two more channel reviews then. I will do Kitchen Confidence after the one I'm going to do now. I thought I had done Kitchen Confidence, but maybe that's my um, memory escaping me. Okay, we're going to review the person who has the greatest username uh, in vidIQ history so far, and that is uh, Cookie Man Boy. So, this is going to be an interesting one because I have no idea what I'm getting myself into here on this video, but let's take a look. And Cookie Man Boy, if you're not doing videos at the moment, then sorry about that, but uh, you you do contribute to a lot of the chats and I think you, you are deserving of a channel review. So, Cookie Man Boy, brilliant username. I suppose the question is, does it relate at all to your content? Killer Power Marcel, I don't know what that means, and that's a picture of Father Christmas. So you might want to update your channel banner as well. The channel itself has uh, 79 subscribers, 600 views. So hello, it's me. So that's your, ch your name, I guess, your username. And you play Movie Star Planet sometimes and Roblox, Minecraft, and more. Okay, so you cover four games. I would ask you now, um, what's your favourite game and which game are you going to cover on your channel? And focus on that, at least in the short term. So we're going to need a channel banner which includes something about Movie Star Planet or Roblox or Minecraft. Whichever channel, whichever um, game you want to concentrate on. As with the other channel banners, this is going to get chopped up. Stop bringing up my stats bar. This is going to get chopped up about here, so you'll probably get killer power on a mobile device. So something to look at there. A bit more information about your channel and like what 
you, you sometimes play movie star Roblox, but in what sense? Are you doing it because you build things? Is it because you play multiplayer games on, on these different games? W what would your channel be about if you were concentrating more on your content? Very little here on the uh, channel layout. So everybody in the comments, what should we be seeing here in the channel layout? There should be a channel trailer potentially, uh, a playlist that tells me more about the games that you play, like your best videos, if you're doing any videos, your most recent videos, which is the only playlist that you currently have. So you want to start creating some custom playlists as well. Into the videos themselves, you've done quite a few videos. I'm not sh Okay. So you've got lots of videos that you've done in the past, but we would want to see some channel branding. Like if you looked at each of these thumbnails independently, would you be able to associate the videos together? We do have these three thumbnails that are very, very similar. Well, they're identical. So if you were going to do a series on what it looks to be Roblox, again, sorry if I'm getting this completely wrong, but we want to see a thumbnails, which if they're similar, that's fine, but you need to change it up a little bit, maybe some text or if you're building something, like the construction of that thumbnail. But there's there's no consistency here in the branding. Uh, for example, this one here, compared to uh, that one there, these two thumbnails, they are completely different topics and completely different thumbnails. So we would want them to be more consistent. However, I don't want to just knock everything on the channel. You have some videos that have got more viewers than others. You've, you're one of your most popular ones is your lost cat. Um, are you able to do a bit more information? Did you find your cat? I'm sure the th 32 people who've watched this video would like to know the, the result of, of the cat. Did it turn up? Let's hope it did. Uh, I, I got you MSP. I really don't understand what that is. And you've just got your pro profile picture there. Uh, let's just quickly look at one of your videos to see if there's anything there. I do love that you've included some emojis there um, on the title. Uh, another technique you probably want to look at is if you're when you're doing filming for YouTube, try and always record in landscape or you end up with uh, big black borders on each side which is what happens on desktops, not so much on mobiles as it might fill the screen in portrait mode, but usually try and record in landscape just so it fills the screen. No video tags here. So you could include some tags such as I lost my cat, big disaster, or has anybody seen my cat as a tag? Maybe just a couple of things to add to your channel tags. And there's no description here as well. Now, I kind of feel as if I'm giving Cookie Man Boy a bit of a hard time here because he had no idea that his channel was going to be looked at. So this is a good way to uh, look at a video and take on board all of the fundamentals. Hopefully, uh, as we go through these channel reviews and I'm repeating some of the standard practices, you can start to see this video and say, yeah, we're missing this or it needs that or there needs to be improvement there. So, yeah, just... <laughs> Just some quick advice for you there, Cookie Man Boy. I hope you don't take this uh, too badly. Uh, the, the fact that you're publishing videos is fantastic. And obviously, you're just starting out on your YouTube adventure. And you you have uh, so much to learn. But you're start, starting at an age where the you have tremendous opportunity. And I'm sorry to, sorry to hear that your cast is, cat is lost again. Let's hope that it does turn up at some point um, in the future. Um, but yeah, so... Quick review there on Cookie Man Boy, and as I say, keep it up. I love it when you join the um, live stream, and I hope you appreciate the, <laughs> the quick um, feedback you've got there. Okay, Kitchen Confidence was the next one that people wanted me to look at, so bear with me, and I'll try and find that channel for you. The Kitchen Confidence will definitely be the last video review that I do today, last channel review. I'm just suffering deja vu. I'm sure I've done this channel before, but maybe I haven't. 
No, I don't think I have. I think I've done another kitchen channel, but not this one. Okay. So I do apologize, Kitchen Confidence. I must have been mistaking you for someone else. I'm just going to have a quick drink. And this, if by magic, Kitchen Confidence appears on screen. So, tips, tricks, techniques, recipes. New videos, Wednesday. Oh, very clear schedule here. New video on Wednesday, live stream on Saturday, and a vlog on Sunday. So we know exactly what the channel's about in the channel banner, which is good stuff. Uh, 60, you join, so it's a very new channel. Join 16th of September, so what, four or five months old. And you're at the very early stages of your channel with 1,500 views. Uh, Kitchen Confidence is the channel for all about new cooks out there. Here I'll share some tips, tricks, and techniques so you can cook like a professional chef. So good description there. We pretty much know what the channel's about. So this, I guess this might be an interesting contrast between Cookie Man Boy, who's got a similar amount of subscribers, versus Kitchen Confidence, who's got a similar amount of subscribers. Uh, but look at the, the development of the, the channel. Like all of these fundamentals are in place. This is, okay, this looks to be a perfect introduction. This is Kitchen Confidence, 20 seconds, let's listen. Hey, what's up guys? This is Kitchen Confidence, where I will share my tips, tricks, techniques, do some recipe breakdowns, so you guys will be cooking with confidence in no time. Okay, so very, um, Pleasant, positive introduction there. One thing I would potentially suggest is do some jump cuts. So as you're talking, include some clips and some frames of you actually do it going through the cooking process. So as you get more clips together in your library, put them in there. Uh, just because the picture at the end is kind of a bit lost on me. Maybe you want to do a some quick time lapses and some quick clips of you making this final uh final dish here so instead of having you on screen it has you preparing the meal that's on there just to be a bit more illustrative of the content that's going to be there but in terms of an introduction 20 seconds we know exactly what your channel's about good stuff you've got popular uploads at the top so, as before, we'll probably want to see a playlist that says what your channel's about, maybe the best meals that you put together. Or because you say you do videos on a Wednesday, live stream on a Sunday, vlog on a Saturday, maybe you just want to include one of each of those videos in a This is Kitchen Confidence, here's what we do here. Let's have a look at your videos in general. So we already have some clear branding in the sense that you have this text here. If we look back to Henrik's house where they utilized fonts and text in a, I, I was saying a better way. It's, it, again, it was black and white text, but it had more, I think there was a bit of transparency to it and it was a little less bold than it is here. So I think it's fine to have these, these wording in, but let's just have a look at the wording versus the title. Spicy chicken drumsticks. Title, spicy dr chicken drumsticks. Do you really need these words covering up this here? For example, another way might be how to make chicken drumsticks. How to make hot chicken drumsticks or how to make spicy chicken drumsticks with just the word hot in red might be a better way to look at this. Easy clarified butter. I have no idea what clarified butter is. Is that where somebody's explained exactly what it means? That's interesting. Anyway, easy clarified butter, easy clarified butter. It's a duplication of the pitch, which I don't think you really need. I would much rather maybe understand what clarified means. So have a bowl in there, a much brighter, and an arrow pointing to the butter, and then maybe saying, is this clarified, or what does clarified mean, or something along those lines. 
rice and egg. Again, looking at this thumbnail, I I can pick out the chicken a little bit, but I it's difficult to pick out the rice. So I think what you probably want to do, Kitchen Confidence, is at the end of your videos, when you're taking these pictures, see if you can get some really bright lights. I'm just going to go back to... Um, bear with me. We're going off topic a little bit here. But maybe if you can get some bright lights, which you can... Well, this is going to look terrible on my... Um, green screen and stuff, but some really bright lights that you can shine down onto your food, just so it gives that it that punch. Your the, the food area of YouTube is certainly where thumbnails become even more important in the in selling your videos, and sometimes the the pictures are a little dark, so I think the thumbnails need some work. Like this is a good example here because. You have a white plate which really shines up well in this screen in this picture. Let's see if we can find the best example here of a thumbnail. They're all pretty much of a muchness where they're a little too dark. So just maybe put it in Photoshop, increase the saturation, increase the vibrancy, maybe to give your pictures a little more pop. And I think you certainly need to look more at your tech tech. Simple breakfast quesadilla, simple breakfast quesadilla. It's wasted real estate on the thumbnail, or it's a wasted title. You need to change one of them, I, I think. And you might want to include how-to somewhere in there, because it looks as if a lot of this is a how-to tutorials. So maybe include that in there somewhere. Most popular video is uh, your channel intro. So how to saute and caramelize Caramelize onions. I said it right the third time. Here we go. This is a classic example of how a small channel should be looking at the long tail keywords. How to saute and caramelize onions is ranking nine in the search term. So that's probably why it's got more views than anything else. If you're looking at terms such as simple, basic, three, easy, tips, onions, these are all, or onions, these are all either very broadly searched terms, so it's gonna be very difficult for a small channel like yourself to break into, or they just have no reference point. Three, easy, simple, those tags in themselves don't necessarily mean anything. You want to be um, concentrating on these ones. So how to saute onions, how to caramelize onions, how to caramelize and saute onions. Just switch that um, tag up a bit more and think about those tags when you're putting them into your search engine optimization. A brief video on how to saute, include the tags a bit more. So try and include these tags in your description. So a brief video on how to saute and caramelize onions. Make sure you have that particular keyword phrase reinforced in the description as well. Hopefully uh, our SEO should help you out with that a little bit. Um, like triple keywords. The triple keywords thing here means how many times have you kind of repeated your tags in your tags, titles, and descriptions because that reinforces uh, the search term when YouTube is indexing it. So it's probably not as high as possible because you're not including perhaps this keyword in the description specifically. And again, maybe include a bit more in your description, include links to other videos. Um, maybe do a follow-up video on how to caramelize onions with a particular I don't know, sauce or recipe. Again, I'm going into the realms of cooking, which I know absolutely nothing about. But it's a good, a good small example encapsulated here of how one tag has probably boosted your uh, video a little bit. Maybe check your suggested video, your traffic sources, Kitchen Confidence, and see if you've got a little bit more traffic through the search term on this particular video. And hey, look, Extra Sessions Media is contributing. So Extra Sessions Media, one of the moderators, is contributing to uh, somebody else's video on vidIQ. So uh, perfect example there of a community building there. Maybe look at some of the thumbnails here as well, Kitchen Confidence. Look at how 
much more punch there is to certain videos here. Like that one is a, a very good example of a thumbnail that just concentrates on the focus of the video, which is caramelized onions. I'm starting to become a professional at saying that. And it doesn't require text and has 62,000 views. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the channel review portion of this live stream. I want to thank everybody who's contributed to the channel, the live stream, in terms of feedback that you've given. And I hope you've all learned some stuff from these channel reviews. I try and do as many as possible, but as always, I run overrun. Each of these ones is supposed to be an hour long, and then I end up doing uh, an hour and a half, but I'm happy to do that because you guys are awesome, and I want to help you all as much as possible. Uh, okay. So we have some uh, light super chats here, which is brilliant. So let me go to these first. I haven't forgotten to do these this time. The super chats we have here are uh, the real Kellis has contributed a, a couple of times here. So one dollar contributions really much appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, Defang Defango. Uh, so as I said at the top of this live stream, I don't do channel reviews based on a live stream, uh, based on a super chat, because I don't have time to read these super chats until the end of a live stream. So what I'll try and do for you is in the next live stream channel review, next Tuesday, I will try and remember to review your channel first as wave and appreciation, but that isn't guaranteed. Um, so, and yeah, I, it looks as if the mod times you had, that was probably because you are posting comments in the live stream to ask for a channel review, and that's not how it works here. We do uh, channel reviews based on community contribution. So I hope that clarifies uh, that a little bit, but I do really appreciate the um, super chats there from all of you. Whew, that was a busy channel review, but fortunately this time I didn't pour my water all over my mouse. I just want to say a big shout out to the moderators. I've seen Extra Sessions Media, Anna, Adventure Toy Reviews, the Doberman Guy, and any of the moderators I not missed out here who are on the live stream. Thank you very much for your contributions. Uh, I'm going to try and speak to you maybe later on in the week about how we can improve the moderation here, but you are doing a fantastic job. And it just leaves me to say thank you very much for joining this live stream. I will be back on Thursday for a interview and it's going to be a pretty big one, the largest channel we've ever interviewed. Uh, keeping that one a little under, under wraps for now, but uh, you'll probably see that in the scheduled live streams coming up very soon. And as always, enjoy the rest of your video making day, everyone. And I'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. And I'm just repeating myself again. Why did I do that? I should have stopped five minutes ago. Let's start again. Thank you, moderators. Thank you, everybody, contributing to this live stream. If you did enjoy it, do lightly tap that thumbs up button and I'll have a wonderful day. I'm waffling again. <laughs> let's, let's end it here. Enjoy the rest of your video making day. Bye for now. I think I need a rest.